Hey folks, uh, Mr. Math Blog here. This lesson is dividing decimals. So uh, don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. So when you go to MrMathBlog.com, make sure that for this lesson, we're in the sixth grade California. Here's sixth grade for the rest of the nation. Us Californians are a little kooky right there. So this is California. When you scroll down, it'll be placed right underneath this multiplying 5.3. So this will say dividing 5.4. And as the year goes on, I'll keep filling this up right here. So by the time you get to this, you're going to see lots more lessons down there. Okay. All right. So here's our common course strand for our teachers right there. And our question is, how do we divide decimals? We're going to do a model first, you guys, modeling decimal division. So here uh, we're going to use the decimal grids to find each quotient. So 6.39 divided by 3. Okay. So here is seven holes right here. Remember, these are our hundredths grids right here. And the reason why they're the hundredths grids is because we're dividing by 0.39, two decimal places. So this is 39 hundredths right there. So let's shade six of these for the six. And then we'll shade 0.39 here. So this will be one column, two column, finally three column. And then the, the 0 0.09 right here is going to be on this fourth column. We'll shade nine of them right there. Okay, so here's 6.39. Now we're going to separate the model into groups of three. Let's do the holes first, you guys. There's six holes. So let's separate them. There's one group of them. There's two groups. There's three groups. So when we separate, we know it's going to be two something because there's this has two holes, this has two holes, this has two holes. Now let's separate these uh, hundredths right here into groups of threes. So I'll take this column, and then since there's nine of them here, we'll take three of these. So this will be three hundredths right here, okay? And then we'll take one of the tenths right there. So there's one group of that one, there's another group of that one, and there's a third group of that one right there. So how many are in each group? Okay, so we're going to separate them into groups of three. So we'll take these two holes will take one of these tenths right here and then three of these hundredths right there okay so how do we write that we write this as 2.13 right there okay so 2.13 so so when we divide that we get 2.13 right there okay let's do the same thing we'll take uh, 6.39 again and we'll divide it by 2.13 okay well let's go back for a second when we divided it by 3 it gave us 2.13 so when we divide it by 2.13 what do you think it's going to give us it'll probably give us three holes right there so let's shade uh, the 6.39 again right there okay and then we'll separate them up into groups of 2.13 okay so there's one group of 2.13 so there's 2.13 right there and now we'll pick up from here okay so um, we're going to go an additional um, since we took out the 0 0.13 right there we had to add another column right here 0.13 so there's two groups and then finally there's another 2.13 so how many groups do we have we have three groups right there okay which is exactly what we got so when using models uh, to divide decimals when might we use grids divided into tenths instead of hundredths well we had it divided into hundredths because there is two decimal places so uh, when the decimal problems in the only have one decimal place then we divide it into tenths okay we could still use the hundreds but we only need the tenths on that if there's only one decimal all right so we use the hundreds grid right there hundreds grid because there's two decimals all right so um when we're dividing by whole numbers, when we divide uh, by a whole number and get a decimal in the quotient, the placement of the decimal point in the quotient is determined by the placement of the decimal point in the dividend. And when you're thinking, what? Okay, so when we're dividing by a whole number, that would be this divisor right here, then the decimal in this quotient is directly above the decimal in the dividend. Okay, that's all that's saying right there. Okay, so here we go. Lampel paid uh, $39 for eight burgers. Here's a whole number. We're going to divide by 8 right there at the state fair. About how much did each burger cost? Well, this is just under 40. I know 8 times 5 is 40, so we're going to, the burgers are going to be a little bit less than $5 right there. Okay, so here we go. We're going to use long division right here. And since 39 is, is not evenly divisible by 8, then we'll place a decimal point here in the dividend and do it right up here in the quotient right up above. And then we'll add 0. Since we're talking about money, we want a decimal answer so we'll continue adding zeros until we get a remainder of zero okay all right eight times four equals 32 so when we subtract we get seven slide the zero down 
8 times 8 is 64. Okay, so we, we still have a remainder of 6 right there, so let's add another 0 and slide it down. Okay, 8 times uh, 7 is 56. Okay, now we still get a remainder, so let's add one more 0, and that's going to get us 40. And finally, 8 times 5 equals 40, and we get a remainder of 0. Now, my students think that they're done with the problem right here. Uh, many of my students do, not all of them. So let's always, if we have a word problem, always answer answer in the context of the word problem, okay? So we're talking about the cost of burgers, so we're going to round this uh, decimal to the nearest hundredth. The nearest hundredth is this uh, 0.7 right there. So is this uh, on point, uh, eight, eight, 0.87? So is it going to round up to 0.88 or stay at 0.87? This 5 is going to make it round up, you guys. So each burger is going to be about $4.88. And since it was a little, this is a little bit less than $5, that's a good reasonable answer right there, okay? All right, here's another one. At Del Campo High School, their track is 9.76 meters wide. It's divided into eight lanes that are equal uh, width. Notice this is a a whole number we're dividing by a whole number okay so how wide is each lane okay so here we're going to use long division notice we place the decimal in the quotient right here right above the decimal that's in this dividend right here okay all right so eight goes into nine one time and when we subtract we get one and then slide the seven down eight times two is sixteen subtract and then slide the six down eight times two is sixteen alright we're not done don't forget we gotta answer the question how wide is each lane well we're talking about meters so each lane is gonna be uh, one point two two meters wide right there okay All right. All right, so to get you ready for the SAT, the SAT is a test that uh, high school students take uh, before they go into college, and the higher your score is on your SAT, the more colleges uh, that will accept you into their college right there. So there's a company that helps students get better SAT scores called B&B &B Test Prep out of Sacramento, okay? And so they charge $153.86 for 14 lessons. What is the fee of one lesson? Okay, so we're going to divide uh, by 14, and we're going to use long division and again we're talking about money so if we have to we'll add zeros till we get a remainder of zero okay all right so notice we place the decimal point in the quotient directly above the decimal that's in the dividend right there okay 14 goes into 15 one so we'll put a one right above the 15 right there and then subtract and then slide down uh, the three okay 14 goes into 13 zero times. You have to put a zero right above the three. A lot of students overlook that. So let's put a zero here. Zero times 14 is zero right there and then subtract. All right. Now I know that 14 times 10 is 140. This is just a little bit less than 140. So 14 times 9. Look at this trick right here. 14 times 9. You can do regular multiplication 14 times 9. But four, 9 is close to 10. It's 1 off of 10. Here's 9. 10 minus 1 right there. And then we can distribute 14 times 10, that's easy, that's 14 with a 0. 14 times 1 is 14, so 140 minus 14 is 126. Slick, okay, so, so when we subtract, 8 minus uh, 6 is 2, and then uh, 3 minus 2 is 1, slide the 6 down, and we already know 14 times 9 is, is 126, so answer the question right there. So the fee for one lesson with B&B &B test prep is $10.99, okay. So when we're dividing by a decimal, when we multiply both the dividend and the divisor by, uh, of a quotient by the same power of 10, the quotient does not change. So for example, you guys, 8 divided by 2, we know is, uh, I'm sorry, 8 divided by 4, that should say 4, whoops. That's going to say 4 in the next few slides right there. So 8 divided by 4 is, um, is 2, okay, everybody knows that. See if I can I, I share these lessons with other math teachers right here. Okay, so uh, when we multiply the, the 8 times 10 and the 4 times 10, yeah, we, it gives us 80 over 40, but it still gives us 2 right there. Well, watch, when we multiply by 100 right there, 8 times 100 is 800, 4 times 100 is 400, we still get 2. So what this is saying right here is if we multiply the top and bottom by a power of 10, our quotient, our answer does not change. And so when we're dividing by a decimal, we're just moving the decimal over. So when you divide a number by a decimal, first change your divisor by 
uh, to a whole number by multiplying it by a power of 10. Then you just multiply the dividend by the same power of 10 and we'll get the same answer, okay? And all that means, you guys, is just move the decimal over the same number of places in the divisor and the dividend, okay? So just make the divisor a whole number and then you just divide it like we normally would, okay? So 8.2 divided by 4.1 is the same as 82 divided by 41. All we did was move the decimal over once, so we moved this decimal decimal over once, okay? We like dividing by whole numbers, so however many we move this decimal over, we move it in the dividend over also, and we'll get the same number right there, okay? All right, so here's an example. If every shake contains 0.5 cup of ice cream, uh, how many shakes can be made using 3.25 cups of ice cream, okay? So we're going to use long division. So the divisor has one decimal here, so we're going to move the decimal over one place. That means we're going to move this decimal over one place, okay? We're going to make this a whole number, make it 5 by moving the decimal. And all we did was multiply this by 10 and multiply this by 10. Just move the decimal over one place. That means move this over one place. So now we just go ahead and divide, okay? So we divide 5 goes into 32.5. Notice now we carry the decimal straight up, okay? 5 goes into 32, 6 times we get 30, subtract, and then 5 slide the 5 down, and 5 goes into 25, uh, 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 5 times. So let's answer the questions. How many milkshakes can we make? Okay, all right, well, um, it, uh, since we can make 6.5 milkshakes, but how many milkshakes can you really make? Pretend like you're a business right here. You can only make 6 whole milkshakes right there. Okay, the rest of it is for your favorite math teacher to give, okay, because they like ice cream. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense, and take care.